Hello and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively, to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. G'day everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames, messieurs, et bienvenue à Paris. Uh, we are still on our trip across parts of Europe, and as you can see, I'm standing in Paris in front of La Grande Arche, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is one of the uh, many quite spectacular buildings in Paris, and we feel very privileged and blessed to be here today. I'm using this as an example of a public building which can be the source of mathematical investigations and questions and uh, problems for students to answer and so on. This particular building, I've seen photographs of it um, as you probably have and you know pictures and looked at it on Google Earth and that sort of thing and I really had no idea of how big it was. It's absolutely stupendous and where I'm standing now I'm at least half a kilometre away from this building behind me. It's 110 metres tall and 110 metres wide and 110 metres uh, deep so it's just about a cube, there's just about a metre or two in it. So it's a stupendous building. Um, it was designed um, as part of a competition um, and was completed in 1986 and adds a sort of counterpoint to L'Arc de Triomphe and my French pronunciation is not very good today um, which is lined up with this one so directly behind the arch in that direction uh, you get to L'Arc de Triomphe as well um, and so for students who are visiting Paris with their teacher or for students who live in the area uh, this is a building they could visit. Now of course uh, depending on where you live that may not be feasible. I wouldn't visit this place very often at all and certainly couldn't bring my students here. But wherever you live there will be public buildings and public spaces that you could visit with your students. And the opportunities exist here to do an awful lot of mathematics. Uh, this one in particular, the dimensions and the statistics about its construction as you'd expect are most impressive. The fact that it's practically a cube makes it geometrically interesting just from that perspective alone. In fact I was just reading on Wikipedia and it said it's sort of like a four-dimensional cube so it, it's uh, even more interesting than a, you know, a, a standard three-dimensional cube. It's got a high degree of symmetry and so you could look at its rotational and reflectional symmetry on a number of uh, planes and axes. The dimensions of the building can be uh, investigated using the size of the panels that make up the sides of the arch. So uh, here's an example which I'll insert into the video of my wife standing next to these panels on the side. She's 154 centimeters tall in her shoes and you can see in this shot that she uh, takes up a little over two of the panels so you could do a, a quite simple uh, proportional estimation activity with someone of a known height standing next to the building and then from there extrapolate and work out the size of the building. Uh, you could of course measure the panels with a tape measure and you can count the panels to the top. You can count the stairs leading up to the top which I just did. There are three flights of 18 or 54 stairs. So once again the opportunities here exist for a wide range of mathematical questions and investigations and problems and ways to connect mathematics with something uh, in the real world and something realistic. Again as I said in a previous uh, recording the mathematics of the construction are finished so we don't have to do any maths to calculate how much steel we're going to need and how much glass we're going to need you know to construct the building. 
but the questions that we can work out uh, are things that are of uh, you know immediate interest to people visiting the place how high is the lift how long does the lift take to get to the top of the arch uh, how many floors are there how many people could be housed in the building given a certain size of office and so on so my encouragement to you this week is to consider public spaces and public buildings that exist near where you are and look for the mathematical opportunities uh, many classes do go for excursions um, each year or each term and so if you're planning an excursion you could look for opportunities to visit some space that will allow you to do uh, some interesting mathematics and connect that to uh, whatever other purposes you might have for the excursion. So here we are, La Grande Arche in Paris. Well, we're back in Australia now after our trip around Europe and uh, we have a number of videos in the bank ready to make into podcasts in the coming weeks. Just wanted to add a couple of comments uh, from a more local perspective, I suppose. Obviously going to Paris isn't an option for many of us, um, especially with our class. But where I'm standing right now in Queensland, less than 20 minutes drive from here is another building that is equally beautiful, completely different uh, style and so on. Uh, it's the Brisbane City Hall, which uh, was uh, finished in 1930. So it's a much older building, but it also has lots and lots of symmetry and other geometrical features as well. So um, that's a local opportunity for a teacher in this area. There are many teachers in Brisbane that can take their students to Brisbane City and study all sorts of different topics relating to what they're studying at school. But they could visit Brisbane City Hall. It's a free public building to visit and look at lots of different features in the windows and the floors and the architecture, the design of the building itself. Um, looking from the front of the building, it has reflectional symmetry so obviously the left and right sides look the same as each other um, inside the the building the main concert hall um, is circular or at least oval I think it's probably a circle and above it is a domed roof so like many public buildings if you look upwards you can see this beautiful dome and of course there is rotational symmetry there as well and they're just a couple of things that you could um, look at in, in a visit to Brisbane City Hall, but there are many others that you could look at as well, and many with a mathematical flavour. This is now part one of this video. We had too much footage from France, which is a nice thing to have. So um, I looked at a number of public spaces in Paris or around Paris um, and the symmetry that is evident there. And so we'll put some more of that into part two. I'm now standing underneath La Grande Arche. It's up there above me, however many floors that is. And the wind's blowing strongly. This is a bit of a, a wind tunnel underneath the arch. In the distance behind me, you may just be able to see L'Arc de Triomphe, that famous French uh, Paris landmark. So I'll finish the podcast here and say bonsoir, au revoir, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me on the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. You can email me via peter at classroomprofessor.com or follow me on Twitter with the username peter underscore price. You can also visit our website at www.classroomprofessor.com to download free resources including the ebook 10 Minutes a Day Times Tables Worksheets. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate the show on iTunes. I look forward to speaking with you next time, and until then, goodbye.